Hello and welcome. Thank you for finding us. My name is Dr. Aaron Rogers. I'm an ear, nose, and throat doc here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm at Advanced Ear, Nose, and Throat Associates with my partners, Dr. Bomley, Michelson, and Goldie. We've been here about 21, 22 years or so. I've been in practice about 11 years since moving over from my training program at Emory. I see a whole lot of nasal issues, including chronic sinusitis, nasal blockage, allergies, recurring acute sinusitis, and sinus headache. We also see tons of eustachian tube problems, hearing loss, ear infections, throat problems, lumps and bumps. Basically anything above the collarbones were pretty much taken care of, except for the brain. Sadly, we're seeing loads and loads of sinus infections, persisting sinus congestion and headaches following coronavirus infection. About half the world now has had coronavirus, at least in developing countries, developed countries uh, like where we live. And about half of those folks have had some kind of lingering chronic issue following their infection, whether it's persisting headaches, head pressure, mental fogginess, or uh, loss of smell, of course, uh, while in the news. I ran a survey here on my site, uh, basically asking about some of these persisting symptoms. How common is it to have persisting long-term symptoms? Uh, we ran it with a little simple survey software from my email, and so what, what, do you, what do you guess? But my email basically exploded after just a couple of days. We had over 500 responses in just 72 hours asking about folks' lingering COVID-19 symptoms. Let me see if I can show you these. They're pretty low tech here today, so let's see if I can click over and show you. Here we go. So what we see here is that basically over half of folks are still having persisting sinus congestion or headaches after COVID-19 has fully cleared. So this is unlike a cold virus or even a flu virus where you basically get the thing and then three weeks later you've forgotten that you had it. Uh, the COVID-19 seems to be a little bit more uh, uh, nefarious in terms of having a little lasting effect, especially on some of the nerve endings and the nasal passages, the eustachian tubes, and maybe the trigeminal nerve. Only a very small fraction, look at this, four out of whatever this was, 500 something responses, only four people felt like they were completely cleared up. About a quarter of folks had mild symptoms, about a quarter had moderate, and over half had uh, still uh, moderate symptoms. About a quarter had severe, I'm sorry. So how many people still had smell loss? If you just look at smell all by itself, look at this, kind of an equal pizza pie here, kind of interesting. So about a fourth totally resolved their sense of smell uh, after three months, about a fourth had mild symptoms still, a fourth had moderate, and a fourth had severe. So basically, over half of folks still had moderate or severe smell loss after COVID-19 had cleared in them. Uh, I think that's actually enough people, if you look at how many people have actually had the infection in our country, uh, and this is basically how many people have then had subsequent permanent change in their sense of smell, and subsequently permanent change in their sense of taste. Are we actually gonna see a change in the restaurant industry or in cuisine in our country if, over the next decade or so? Between several of the restaurants sort of having to reboot from HR issues and openings and closings and lockdowns and whatnot. And then now their customers have actually had a change in their taste sense and what kind of foods they might enjoy going forward because their sense of taste and smell has actually changed. I think that's kind of an interesting side question here. Maybe we can address that in a separate blog. Uh, I have been always very interested in the sense of smell since I uh, did some research during my residency program on nasal polyps and chronic nasal swelling. Uh, we actually looked into some of the ways that we quantify smell loss and really the most practical way that most otolaryngologists and neurologists are quantifying smell loss are with some regimented, pretty well studied uh, smell scratch and sniff tests, which is basically a little 40 question test that's standardized. It's uh, basically standardized uh, metrics, it's standardized the way it's made, and they importantly have an expiration date uh, on the test itself, because after that date, basically you can't really trust the results anymore. And we're again seeing just like this response showed, about a fourth of people after COVID are having still severe smell impairment. Maybe not totally gone, but still severe impairment uh, even months later. Uh, so we're seeing that uptick. That accounted for also one other thing is that when COVID hit, it was like sort of hard to get those smell tests anymore because they were in high demand like everything else in this country, it seemed like. So uh, basically we've finally gotten our backlog over with and we have plenty of smell tests now. Uh, anyway, let me talk a little bit about what may be happening to you, not related to smell, but sinus infections. Most sinus infections that linger are not still the virus happening to you two or three weeks later. The viral infection hits and the average virus will hit and clear between three and say seven days after you're infected. But if you have a very vigorous immune response going on, or if you have a lot of lingering bacteria in the area, it can cause basically excessive swelling during that virus infection. That swelling limits your sinuses ability to drain and cleanse themselves. It impairs the cilia 
or basically the little pumping features of the cell surfaces that let all the yucky mucus get cleared out, it impairs those and it can't work as well. And that impairment basically lets bacteria set up, which can basically deeply embed the tissue and cause a much more vigorous inflammatory response, pain, discomfort, drainage, cough, cause even some lower airway symptoms as well, such as a lot of throat clearing, cough, and uh, even asthma flare-ups and whatnot. Whenever that bacteria is hitting, that's like at day 10 or day 14 after an acute infection, that's when we start talking about antibiotics and how useful antibiotics are uh, to essentially clearing things up. So typically when you get those infections, we're then you know kind of talking to our primary care or urgent care or maybe a specialist if you've seen them before, and we're starting antibiotics. We don't start them on day one when you first get the virus. We start them on day seven or day 10 or so down the road a little bit when we know there might be bacteria uh, contributing to things. And then it could take three weeks to really help out a lot with a nasty sinus infection. So you, the little five-day med pack or a seven-day is usually not enough. Maybe for some people it is, but usually not enough that there really is a deeply embedded bacterial infection. You usually have to go a little bit longer. Uh, and in fact, before we start talking about CT scans and MRIs and surgery or balloon sinuplasty, we actually are treating with three or four weeks of an antibiotic. And we might also look at other risk factors as well, such as allergies, asthma, or uh, allergies, not only pollen, but allergies to medications and environmental things as well. Um, some, finally, some medications that you might be taking, like for high blood pressure, or for hair loss, or for other kinds of maybe male organ dysfunction may also cause increased nasal swelling and uh, facial discomfort and sinus headache and symptoms like that, especially those things might flare up at night or whatnot after taking some of those medications. So we sort of look and evaluate for other causes that may be causing some of these symptoms too. Anyway, I hope uh, you can click around on our site a little bit, maybe subscribe to this YouTube channel, uh, maybe check out our channel in the future for other videos and come down and see us. We're down in Atlanta, weather's usually good, mild winters, warm summers. Uh, we're here, we'd love to have a visit. We can even do a televisit if you don't wanna visit in person. All right, thank you.